Right, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Non-Farm Payrolls webinar on Friday the 8th of March. Before I get started, I um, need to just uh, do a little bit of housekeeping, a brief disclaimer. Um, just basically saying that I'm, I cannot and will not be giving you any sort of buying and selling advice with respect to levels and what have you. Um, but what I will be doing is hopefully giving you some ideas as to where the key key chart levels are, key chart points are on the various um, FX markets, indices, as well as key commodity prices in the wake of um, in the wake of the payrolls announcement, which is due out in around about 15 minutes time. And I've got to say, I think with respect to this payrolls announcement, we do need to be aware of a a significant revision to the January number which came in by and large much better than expected. Um, I'm hoping that you can all see and hear my screen okay you can hear me loud and clear and you can see the updating watch lists that you've got in front of me right now and uh, that um, you, you can see the various panels and the chart that I'm just about to open um, in front of you for Euro dollar. But I think first and foremost, before we do get started, I think we have to look at what is likely to happen in the wake of these payrolls numbers in the context of what's happened this week. Because what's happened this week, I think, is a significant sell-off in uh, global equity markets. And this is probably going to be the first significant sell-off of the year since we started rallying at the end of last year we've seen some we've seen some really decent um decent gains from the lows that we saw back in december and if we look at the s p 500 chart i talked about this a fair bit that 2800 level over the course of the past four or five weeks we finally managed to push up to it um, but look at this weekly decline that we're seeing thus far now it's very unlikely that um, it's very unlikely that we're going to um, finish this week higher given this particular candle here. Now that would suggest to me that ultimately over the course of the next few weeks and months and the fact that we're now below the 200 day moving average that the line of least resistance for the S&P 500 is likely to be lower which means that any resistance that we currently have on the S&P 500 is likely to come in around about 27.50, 27.55. Um, now I am assuming that uh, you guys can hear me um, because I haven't heard anything to the contrary and I'm assuming that uh, you can hear me loud and clear and see my screen. So 27.50 is going to be a very, very key level on any pullback on the S&P 500. And if we look at the four hour chart, we can see that it's round about through these series of highs through here. So any any positive read on the payrolls, which is likely to prompt a rebound in the S&P, could well find a little bit of resistance at 27.50, 27.55. But I think it's important to also look at what we're expecting on the payrolls numbers, because I think by and large, it's not really going to be the headline number that's going to drive the direction of the dollar and I think in this context the direction of the dollar is going to be key in terms of how equity markets react because at the moment a stronger dollar is something that I think equity investors don't really want to see and in terms of that I think it's important that we have a good look at the dollar index because I think a decent wages number and this is the number that I'm going to be paying particular attention to a decent wages number could well push the dollar index through this 9770 area that's capped any dollar gains over the course of the last five to six months and we're back again we're back up there again um, on the back of obviously yesterday's very dovish ECB rate announcement the announcement of the TL TRO um, which is due to start in September and I think with with respect to that and the strength of this afternoon's numbers 
is going to be key in terms of central bank policy, US central bank policy going forward. And I think it's through that prism that you really have to look at how the market reacts to the numbers that are due out in the course of the next 10 minutes. Because ultimately, it's really about what US markets or US investors are pricing in in terms of US rate policy going forward. If we also look at the US 10 year index, we can also see that there's a really solid support on yields around about 261, um, which is the lows that we saw at the end of January. So for me, in terms of the direction of the dollar, I'm going to be looking at the support that we've got on the US 10 year Treasury. Um, as well as the resistance that we currently have on the US dollar index and market perceptions of what US Fed policy will be relative to central bank policy elsewhere. So it's really not about what the Fed might do this year. It's really more about what the, the ECB is likely to do this year, the Bank of Japan and the People's Bank of China. And ultimately, the dollar can still strengthen even if we have a payrolls number and a wages number that comes in pretty much as expected because ultimately it will mean that the Fed is probably not likely to ease interest rates anytime soon but it also means that it's likely to continue to reduce the size of its balance sheet and that in essence will help drive the, drive the dollar higher. So my my primary focus today will be in what the US bond market does and at the moment it's trading towards the lower end of its recent ranges so any spike up in yields is likely to be dollar positive but really it's a question of whether or not we can actually push through these highs that we saw um, yesterday around about 97.70 which more or less equates let me just move these over so that uh, we can see that um, we can analyze what the important numbers are. I'm going to remove the unemployment rate number for uh, the, uh, the, U the, US, the US data. If we look at the euro dollar, the 97.70 area equates to this 111.70.80 level that acted as a nice little support on the move lower yesterday. Now, why is this level important? Well, if I scroll all the way back here, to the entire up move from those lows all the way back in 2017 at 103.40 and the peaks here at 125. 61.8% retracement of that was 111.86, 111.80 there or thereabouts, which ties in quite nicely with the lows that we saw yesterday around about 111.76. So even if we get a fairly decent positive dollar number, I think in the short to medium term, we're probably going to see a bit of a rebound on a test lower in euro dollar. But what we do need to do is we need to get back above 112.70.80, simply because that's acted as a significant area of support over the course of the last few weeks. So if we look at the key levels that I'm looking for in terms of any market reaction on the payrolls numbers, if we get a little bit of dollar weakness, there's certainly potential for us to come all the way back to this series of lows through here, which is around about 111.78, 112 70.80, my bad. Um, and I'll draw a horizontal line through that. But overall, I would expect the euro dollar to continue to weaken over the course of the next two to three months. The problem is that waiting for it to weaken is tantamount to watching paint dry sometimes and that's certainly what it's looked like over the course of the past few months but the direction of travel is quite clear as can be seen from this trend line that I've drawn from the peaks that we saw in early September middle of September every single rebound we can see the range here it's quite clear we've got significant resistance significant support and we can see that this 6070 level on 112 has, a, has been a fairly decent was was a fairly decent support area for pretty much most of this year um, until we broke below it yesterday, and I think that's I think that's really significant in the short to medium term. So the boundaries I think for any move today are likely to be dictated by the lows that we saw yesterday, and obviously that area 
through here, this congestion area through here of around about between 112.60 and 112.70. If we also look at we look at dollar yen, a decent dollar number here will obviously put upward pressure on dollar yen. Um, and certainly I think the, the move back above the 200 day moving average was fairly positive, but we're now back below it again, which would appear to suggest that the bias has shifted a little bit towards a slight dollar correction as we head into the end of the week. And I think that's important in the context of uh, where we are currently. We've seen a really big up move in the dollar this week. Is it likely that we're going to see fresh highs as we head into the weekend? And experience, experience has taught me that on the balance of probabilities, it's probably unlikely. That's not to say that it can't happen, but certainly in terms of managing the risk, I think it will take a really significantly big number in terms of wages of around about 3.4, 3.5 to push the dollar significantly higher against the euro, push it significantly higher against the yen. Certainly if we look at it in the context of this chart here, we can see that there is this decent area of resistance just above 112, but there's probably more potential to drift a little bit lower. Certainly I don't expect to see a significant move one way or the other on the dollar yen. However, if we look at the dollar CAD, because obviously it's Canadian payrolls as well, and I think that's important, the line of least resistance for dollar CAD is for a move higher. We going to talk about that a little bit here. We've broken out of this triangular consolidation here that we've been trading sideways since um, the end of January. We've broken higher, we've broken up through this series of peaks through here and that would suggest over the course of the next month or so that dollar CAD could see a move towards 135 initially and then 136 and I think it was significant earlier this week that we saw the Bank of Canada take further rate hikes off the table. Now that is likely to undermine dollar CAD even further, particularly if oil prices remain weak. So the Canadian payrolls report, we saw a bumper number in January, 66.8. We saw a bumper US payrolls number in January as well of 304. What was significant about the January payrolls number and the December payrolls number was December was quite strong initially, came in at 312 and was revised downwards to 223. So there is a risk that we could see the US payrolls number for January revised lower um, and we could see actually a decent number for February. Generally when you look back, when I look back over the course of the past five years, February payrolls numbers have been fairly strong but they've usually come off the back of a weak January number. Obviously we've had a very strong January number so I think the correlation there could actually be slightly different. So. I think in terms of the February number, even if we see if we see a decent number there, we could actually see a significant downward revision to January in the same way that we did to December. So um, certainly keep an eye on the employment change for um, the revisions for the January numbers. Certainly in terms of the Canadian economy, we've seen a very flat growth over the course of the last two or three months. So I'd be very surprised to see a decent number for the Canadian economy given the weak GDP numbers that we've seen there and I think that would potentially lend a probably more of an upward bias to the dollar CAD and a move back towards 134.60 as long as we can hold above 134.21 134.30 and overall I would suggest that the bias is probably more to the upside than the downside in the dollar CAD but that you know I've improved that that could that could be that could be wishful thinking on my part. Aussie dollar is also at a very, very key level, very, very key support level. Keep an eye on 70 and 69.80. Obviously, that was the little flash crash that we saw in January on the back of the Apple, um, the Apple announcement, the Apple profits warning that saw a little bit of risk off right in there. But certainly, we are very close to some key support on the Aussie dollar. And again, I would be very surprised to see significant dollar strength and a significant significant move lower on the Aussie so close to the weekend. So I think for me, the bias would be for a little bit of dollar strength, but I wouldn't expect us to see it. I wouldn't expect us to, to see us take out the highs um, on the dollar for this week. It really depends on obviously how well the numbers come out. But certainly in terms of how the markets are looking, if we have a quick look at the DAX, 
we can see again here we've come off some very significant resistance levels and I think the potential is for further weakness in equity markets over the course of the next few days and weeks irrespective of how the, the number comes out. So as we head up to the number I think it's probably incumbent upon me to now keep quiet wait for the numbers to come out and try and digest where we go to next. I think what I will do though is I'll put a five minute dollar yen chart up to give an indication of to the initial market reaction of any dollar strength or weakness as the numbers break. Goodness gracious me, that is an awful number. <laughs> that is a dreadful number. Uh, 20,000. 55,000 jump in Canada. So obviously that blows my Canada dollar cadder and my dollar cad position completely out of the range but the unemployment rate has dropped to 3.8 percent average hourly earnings have risen to 3.4 so that i mean that's that average hourly earnings is a fairly decent uh that's a fairly decent number but certainly in terms of the dollar reaction it's profoundly negative so i think it's unlikely that we'll take out the highs in the dollar index this week but we may see a little bit of a rebound once the dollar has tested the lows simply because of the positioning that we're currently seeing in the market with respect to the dollar and you're now starting to see a little bit of a rebound in dollar yen there's a decent support area of support coming in around about 110.70 um, on dollar yen if we look at the daily chart I should have mentioned that earlier um, if we can see that here while I try and zoom that in it coincides with this series of highs through here so certainly I think we could see a degree of support come in on dollar yen around about 110.70 um, but certainly in terms of equity markets it's going to be somewhat of a mixed bag but I certainly think we'll see euro dollar start to head towards the highs um, of the day head towards 112.70 112.80 let's have a quick look at dollar cad if you do have any questions guys please feel free to zip them across but certainly in terms of what we've seen thus far, um, the, the weak dollar number is obviously going to help push gold back up again. But I'm fairly bullish on gold anyway. I think the downside to gold is likely to be fairly limited um, with solid support around about what 1275, 1280. Um, around about there. I am hoping that you guys can hear me because I'm not really getting any feedback on any of the uh, on any of the on any of the numbers but we certainly are seeing a significant uh, pullback in the dollar index we can see it here there we go that's not surprising when you can when you when you consider how bad the numbers are but it is slightly counterintuitive um, let's have a quick look at the FTSE 100 get rid of that so I would expect to see a retest here of the lows that we saw um, last week round about 7050 fairly decent support there let's draw that in yeah the gold rally I would absolutely I would absolutely concur with that just being asked about the gold rally um, I would certainly expect to see a little bit of resistance coming around about the 50 day initially. I don't certainly think that we'll um, see, uh, I don't, certainly don't think we'll see this 1305 level quite yet because obviously you have to take into account this series of, this series of lows here which could well act as a little bit of resistance in the short to medium term. But overall I don't see an awful lot of downside in gold and the reason for that is ultimately even if the Federal Reserve wanted to hike rates I think they're going to be constrained by the fact that no one else globally is going to be able to and they won't want a higher dollar so for me it's really about um, buying the dips on gold and only really reconsidering that position if you move below the support around about 20, 1275 which was the which was the lows that we saw um, in the early part of, two, of January 2019 here. Overall I don't really see a case for um, 
aggressively being short of gold at this at this at, the, at these at these sorts of levels. So let's have a quick look at the S and P. The key level for me on the S and P was the break of 27.50 earlier this week. On a technical basis, that is a little bit worrying in terms of overall gains. What we what we're also going to see here is a negative or bearish engulfing week. Now, generally, that tends to be very negative. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that we can't see a pullback to 27.50 or 27.60, but overall it's broadly negative and likely to see us drift back to 2700 over the course of the next few trading sessions because on a technical basis I think it's very hard to argue the case for significant further gains given what we've seen over the course of the last few days. Markets are largely looking a little bit um, negative in terms of any potential trade agreement I think an awful lot of that is already priced in which really begs the question what's going to drive the markets higher and I'm struggling to see what the catalyst would be apart from obviously much looser central bank policy but you're looking at it in the context of an RBA that's looking dovish, a Bank of Canada that's looking dovish, an ECB that's absolutely terrified that we're going to slow down even further and that has decided that it's going to do another LTRO before six months in advance which suggests to me they're not expecting to see any signs of a pickup anytime soon. So the central banks are basically running at the extremes of accommodative monetary policy. So for me, it's really a question of what's going to drive equity markets higher. And at the moment, given the earnings outlook, given the shrinking that we're seeing in earnings potential, what is the price action telling me? And the price action is telling me that we could well struggle in the short to medium term. Does anyone else have any questions on any markets they want me to have a look at from a technical basis? Because certainly in terms of those payrolls numbers, it is a worry that we've seen a significant slowdown in US jobs growth. But it does tell me that the US labour market is probably starting to tighten up a little bit. We've seen minimum jobs growth, 20,000, a significant jump in wages that could, in essence, signal one of two things a very tight US labour market or it could signal that the US economy is starting to reach the limits of actually adding new jobs and certainly the unemployment rate dropping to 3.8 percent would appear to suggest that we are starting to get some significant tightening in that market. I'm just going to check the participation rate just to check to make sure that it wasn't a, a drop in the participation rate that's actually prompted the unemployment rate to fall and the participation rate was was flat, 63.2. I'm being asked if... Right, OK, so US 30. Right, OK, I've been asked about the US 30, so I'm going to look at that now, and then I'm going to look at oil prices. So, US 30. That would generally follow the S&P, so um, if I think the S&P is going to go lower, then as a general rule, I would expect the, the Dow to do exactly the same thing. And certainly in terms of the rollover, I think we're there is potential for us to retest the 200-day moving average. Um, I, would be, I would be surprised to see us break much below this series of lows through here. So let me just, let me just expand that out even further. Hang on, let me just close these down now. And I appear to have lost my Dow chart. There we go. Right. Let's expand that. There we go. So can you see that nicely there? So I would expect us to retest the 200-day moving average. So that currently is... Oops, I just lost that for a minute. Give me a second. Okay, we're going to have to close that down again. Let's try and bring that back. I've opened the wrong one. My mistake. So that currently comes in around about 25,100. So there's certainly potential for us to 
move at least another 100 points lower on the Dow. But you also have to put in the context of how far we've come lower this week already. And we've come down quite a bit. So I'd be a little bit reluctant to be aggressively bearish on the Dow at these, these, uh, this particular point. But ultimately what we're seeing here is certainly, I think, a significant unwinding of where we were um, this time last week. We've wiped out pretty much all of the gains of the last two weeks. Oil prices. Brent crude or uh, WTI, are you not really concerned one way or the other? On Brent, we're at a very key support level on Brent. If we look at the series of lows over the course of the past few weeks, we can see there's a nice area of support around about $64.20. So at the moment, we're in a little bit of a range between 67 and 64 if we break below 64, then there's certainly potential for us to move a little bit lower. But I would be very reluctant to sell into a move towards the lows of the last couple of months because generally crude oil prices tend to rebound off areas of support and resistance. You can see it pretty much through here, here and here. So I think if we do head back towards around about 64.20, 64.10, then we're right for a little bit of a rebound in the overall range on Brent. If we look at WTI, it's a similar sort of story. If we look at around about 54 and a half on WTI, potential for a rebound off these lows here. You can see where I've drawn these horizontal lines where the areas of support and resistance generally tend to, to um, repeat themselves. And this is generally something that I look at quite a lot. Support and resistance for me are very, very key areas of consolidation. So what generally doesn't tend to happen is they, the market doesn't tend to blast straight through them. You usually get a reaction around them and you usually tend to get a little bit of a rebound one way or the other. Um, yeah, I mean, Brent tends to be a little bit safer and slower moving. You're absolutely right. Um, also tends to be slightly more depth to Brent than there is WTI. And that probably means that it that probably explains why it generally tends to move uh, in a slightly slower fashion. Right, just being asked about the DAX. And we looked at that a little bit earlier. Let's just maximize, let's maximize that. Be careful around about 11,400. You've got a nice little low through there but you've also got a nice area of resistance through here. So if we change that to say, for example, a four hour chart on the 11,400, you can see that through here and through here, we've, we have a decent area of support. So I think if the DAX does test lower, then we're likely to see a little bit of a rebound, a retest of 11,500. But I still think in the longer term, we will retest this line. The big question is, is whether we retest it by trading sideways towards it or whether we drift down towards it. Uh, but certainly in terms of the DAX, pr probably limited downside in the short term. But over the course of the next few trading sessions, we can certainly drift lower on the DAX. Looking at the cable, I think with respect to the cable, you're going to have to be very, very careful in the context of events next week, because obviously we have another, yet another potential meaningful vote on the Brexit deal. But certainly I think in terms of the line of least resistance and in terms of a stronger dollar, I think there's potential for further sterling weakness towards this trend line support from the lows that we saw at the end of last year. And I think if you've got, and if you're looking at weak, weaker equity markets, I think it's interesting the way the cable has, re, has, has sort of reacted towards the increase in risk and the way that, that uh, equity markets have started to react over the last few days. It has more or less tracked the topping out in equity markets. So if we get further weakness in equity markets, then we could actually see further declines in the cable. The big level, I think, for me on the pound against the dollar at the moment, below the current lows of around about 130.50, you're 
is obviously the 200 day moving average which is around about just below 130 but also the trend line support from the lows that we've got here so I can see further downside in the cable towards around about 130 129.80 but we're still in an uptrend so um, I don't want to get too bearish on it quite yet but certainly in terms of further downside we've certainly got the legs for further downside as long as we stay below 130 120 so we could get a rebound towards 130 120 um, for a move back towards 130 but of course all of that is dependent on events coming up in the next week or so but I think what has been interesting over the course of the last few days has been the breakout that we've seen in euro sterling um, we've seen a significant break lower on euro sterling below 86 20 30 and that for me I think is actually fairly significant because if we look at what's held euro sterling up over the course of the past couple of years it's been this 86 20 30 level so the break below it for me suggests that the potential for further losses in euro against the sterling is quite high and I would only revise that opinion if we move back at, through 86.30. So I think while we're below 86.30, um, there is potential for us to actually go lower on Euro Sterling towards 85.40 and 85. Um, so that's an interesting one because that would, that would imply further Sterling strength, which I find surprising when you consider the default position on the current Brexit negotiations is that the the UK leaves the European Union on the 29th of March that is the current default position and for that to change MPs would have to either vote for Theresa May's Brexit deal and pass it through the House of Commons next week or in the coming or in the coming weeks or they would have to vote to extend article 50 and at the moment I can't see that that MPs are going to get the required 320 odd votes to pass new legislation on the statute books to reverse the UK leaving the European Union on the 29th of March. That is the default position. That is what MPs voted for in February 2017 and in the absence of passing further legislation that is what will happen in the event that the, the MPs continue to disagree on the current default position. Um, so that is that is euro sterling so that's an interesting one because that suggests to me we could well see further sterling weakness while we're below 86 uh, euro weakness while we're below 86.30 okay so that's um let's have a quick another quick look at dollar cad because obviously that's that's slipped back quite sharply in the wake of those disappointing us payrolls and much better than expected canadian payroll numbers um, so let's have a look at where the next key support level is on dollar cad and that for me is currently around about 133.80 we can see that from this series of highs through here overall while it's a disappointing number for me the most important number of all of those was the wages numbers so for me that still suggests to me that um, the Federal Reserve at the very least is likely to remain on hold and is likely to continue to reduce its balance sheet but nonetheless this bearish candle here would appear to suggest that we've probably seen the highs in the short term in the dollar cad this is also a potential tweezer top at 134.70 and it's going to take something significant for us to uh, move back towards 135 which would suggest we may see a drift back down to 133.40 133.50 over the course of the next few days in dollar cad okay so I'm going to wrap this up now ladies and gents unless anyone else has any follow-up questions um, I'd like to thank you for uh, turning up today if you could leave a Google review that would be great uh, hopefully you found the session informative I will be posting this on YouTube at a later date um, later this afternoon if any of you want to listen to it back and uh, follow up on uh, anything that I've already talked through or discussed in the course of the last half hour otherwise I'd like to thank you all for turning up thank you all 
for tuning in and um, wish you all a very nice and pleasant weekend. <laughs>